Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. All right, today's the first video. I think I'm going to do a few of these if, unless you guys don't like them. I'm cleaning out my storage, finally, after all these years. Uh, short story, the reason why it's taken a couple decades, actually, is when I moved back to town, well, I moved out of town. I had to quickly store all my stuff so I could move away and go to work. And... Uh, when I moved back, I I didn't immediately move into the house. I just had a baby in. And anyway, I went to get my stuff, and my storage unit had been broken into. I figure I probably lost, I mean, what I spent on the used market. It was mostly used equipment, some really nice stuff. I had some tube gear, uh, audio stuff. It was mostly audio stuff. They left all my test gear, but they took all my audio stuff. I figure it's twenty twenty five thousand dollars worth of stuff they took, and they left a few things. In this video, I'm going to show you one of the things they left: an MC30 Macintosh 30 amplifier. So, yeah. Anyway, my daughter and her friends went to uh, start, you know, cleaning it out for me. I, I just couldn't bring myself to even go there, but you can imagine how dirty, filthy, and nasty it was. So, they even found a mouse or rat carcass. It was, uh, yeah, anyway, pretty bad stuff. So, uh, anyway, I've got some test gear. I want to show you some of this stuff that I, I cleaned up. There's a, I got, it's kind of crazy. I got three Heath kit units I did not clean, so they won't be in this video. They'll be in the next one. But I got to clean them up. It took me a while to clean up the stuff that I have, and I just wanted to show you guys you know, it'd probably take too long also, so I wanted to break this video up in a few. And some of this test gear I'll probably give away or sell or something, I don't know. Uh, some of it I'll keep. Anyway, let's take a look. Alright, next what we have, it looks like an isolation transformer. And the fuse, I checked it, it's a 3 amp fuse. Uh, it looks kind of homemade. I don't see any labels of any sort. It looks like it's well made. I'd say it weighs about five pounds or so and has um, hospital grade, right? So hospital grade connectors, pretty nice, pretty cool how you can see the conductors inside that. Obviously soldered to the uh, terminals. So yeah, looks nice. Now this is show you here See? I'll go to each conductor here just to show you that it's isolated now the ground will not be isolated here let me hold that there yeah there it goes so and I do have the switch on, the fuse is good. So yeah, that's an isolation transformer. Uh, I might put this on a scope or something, just to give nice quiet power. Uh, I'll open it up in another video. I gotta get the uh, screwdrivers to open this. We'll just go through these real quick and we'll check these out in other videos. All right, since we're on the isolation kick, we'll check this out. Oh, that says 2.5 amps. See that other one? Yeah, it's pretty close to the weight of this one, but it's a lot smaller. I can't imagine it's more power, but 250 VA, uh, so 120 volts, and you can see there it's a Zantex, high pot tested. That means it's isolation tested. On this side we have our two receptacles, uh, the green dot showing it's uh, isolated. So, I would imagine both of them are isolated. I think it's a dual receptacle, so they only put the dot on one side. 250 VA. Look, date's 91. 39 week, 91. <laughs> but yeah, you can see the iron slabs there, and look at that cord. Pretty nice size cord. So, the one thing about these um, hospital grade is the leakage current to ground is supposed to be limited so that we don't 
you know, cause problems with electronic devices for hospital equipment. Yeah, they're connected. And they're connected. But, isolated from this side. Except for the ground. And that's because this metal needs to be grounded so that it's safe. All right, guys, so look what we have here. We have a transistor and a FET tester. So this will be fun to check this out. And here's our little wire connectors here, our polarity. Yeah, it's all really neat stuff, zero gain. I, I cleaned it up, but it still needs a little more cleaning. And look there, the old power cord. It's got a pretty nice little power cord. Pretty flexible. I unwrapped it to dust it off. And look at that. We have all our alligator clips. So that was pretty surprising that they're still in here. Okay, and the bottom has some nice rubber feet. Looks pretty nice. Can't that'd be fun to try that out. Alright, guys, this is a monster. Now Obviously, this meter needs a little attention. The needle's been broken off. Uh, I'd imagine this is an off-the-shelf type meter. Hopefully, I can still get it off the shelf. But this is a power oscillator. I really uh, like this. I'm glad I found it. Uh, you can go up to 130 volts so you can simulate AC power. You got five-digit display here. Adjust the frequency. So, it's pretty nice. A uh, little gold plated connectors so pretty cool and it's fairly heavy I'm gonna glue that back on maybe it's got these knobs you can adjust the handle tightness you got the rubber feet and probably not damage the back end but or the front end but here you go transistors on the big heat sink and here's the regulation thing, uh, 1.5 amp fuse. So it's probably good for, you know, a couple hundred watts. Manufactured by the Industrial Test Equipment Company. Port Washington, New York, USA. <laughs> you don't find one of these every day. So by the way, these feel like really nice pots. Feels like a nice, you know, it's nice and smooth. It's a 10 turn pot, both of these. And we got the two ranges. But yeah, pretty cool. Powertron. And by the way, they provide a nice, you know, large size cable with that. That's pretty cool. And check out the cables I found. Uh, miscellaneous cables. Here's some Monster interconnects. Here's another Monster. Just different size, gauge, whatever. And here's some old Kimber cable. Pretty cool. I built these uh, for a speaker I uh, built way back in the day. Gold uh, contacts still look good. So, by the way, uh, they have the two different sizes of wires. And I used to use this type for doing speaker crossovers. So, yeah, there we go. Audio cables. I never paid a lot of money for this stuff. Yeah, I believe uh, this is cable that... Ray Kimber gave me back when I was in uh, college actually. Alright, this is something I'm excited about. Uh, General Radio, we uh, referred to these as Genrad. But, yeah, look at that. You got your fine tune right here and course adjustments. Nice output terminals. And, yeah, that's pretty cool. 10 to 50K. Sounds like audio frequency range, right? So I'm gonna have to test this for how clean it is. And uh, look at the type of connector it is. Should we take a quick look inside? I'm afraid there might be spiders and stuff in here. Nope. Back of this is nice and clean. There's our fuse. Output has hum when or if cover is off, so. Yep, you need the shielding, right? Yeah, you can see the poly caps down here. 
some really nice resistors. And look at that artwork. There you go. That's the way to run traces. Nice and smooth. No right angles. Yeah, that actually looks pretty darn clean inside, I'd say. You can see these gang pots back here. The fine tune and the course adjustments. And look at the gearing in there. For the frequency adjust. And you can see the frequency stuff is mostly kept inside this can. That's really nice. Yeah, pretty darn cool. We'll take a closer look on this in another video. Yeah, I also wanted to just show you that I found bags of these things. Quite a few different component values. Pretty nice. I think that 330 ohm was uh, stuff I used for some audio stuff. And I remember this box of poly caps I was just revered. Uh, anyway, We'll have to try some of these out, see if those, look at that, three terminal aluminum electric, electrolytics. And look at that, it looks like they're sealed, right? Sand Gamos. Yeah, I remember these being really good caps back in the day. And look at this, it's kind of broken up. I'm going to have to see if I can get some of these uh, lever switches and fix this up. But it's a timer, pretty nice. You can set it up as a counter. Um, or just set the time, but it's a national audio timer. I can't really tell how many. Oh, I can see them now. One, two, uh, maybe four digits in a decimal spot. I can't really tell for sure. It's kind of been through some trouble here 60 or 50 hertz, depending on what kind of power. And there's our output. Look at that. There's my sticker back in the day when I had an audio shop. The Audio Doctor. Power Amp Specialist. That's many years old. That's pretty cool. Alright. I was wondering if I still had this. Um, current probe. Check it out. You have a power supply that you power this amp up. And there's our termination thing and there's our current probe. Pretty cool. It's for reading AC current. Uh, this is a, you know, this is one of my babes back in the day. All right, guys, this is the MC, the Macintosh uh, 30. And I'm missing the tube. It was broken in the box that it was sitting in. And there is the nameplate. So that's our MC 30. And on the back side, okay, I swung this around so you could see it. There's the specs. There's our amplifier. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to get a tube. We're going to clean it up on this end over here. We just have, you know, this this chrome looks like it'll polish up. It doesn't, it looks like there's just a slight bit of rust, but not bad. Not bad at all, actually. So on this side, we have the output, and we have our preamp um, input. And then here's the input, and here's the output as well. I wonder if the fuse looks good. The fuse looks good, so that's a good sign. And then we also have this uh, input as well. This says, uh, it looks like 0.5 volt input. And here's a hum adjust. And the gain right there. See if I can get look at the bottom. And there's the bottom. Look at that old label right there. It says uh, Allied Radio Corp. One of two. Darn it. Hope I have the other one still. And there's our power cord. Just what we, you know, the old zip cord, right? No fancy expensive cord for Macintosh on this. All right. Guys, what do you think? Uh, what should I... Re I want to restore that Macintosh 30. It's MC30 is what a lot of people refer to it as. I had three of them in all. Uh, a lot of this stuff, when I lived back east in Maryland, uh, not too far from uh, Washington, D.C., there's a lot of electronic shows, or flea markets we call them, and I would go and barter, sell trade, 
and that kind of thing. Mostly buy stuff. <laughs> but, you know, then some things I didn't want to take back and trade it for other things. Uh, anyway, that's how I acquired a lot of this stuff, and, and it is pretty cool. The Macintosh 30 amps, I was walking out of the of the flea market one day, and it was like the last pickup bed as I was kind of curling off to go to my car, that I looked down and the guy had him in a box getting ready to put him back in the bed of his truck. And I said, hey, uh, what do you want for those things? And he goes, oh, I don't know. How about a hundred bucks? <laughs> so I was like, uh, sure. Try not to fall all over myself. I whipped out some money, gave it to him. And uh, so I got three of them. But Actually, I think I got two that time and went back another time. He had another one, so I bought the other one. But anyway, I ended up at three. And I actually, on the, uh, the first two I had, I had gone through them and re-capped re, uh, them. You know, put poly caps in place of the old caps. And somebody said, oh, you shouldn't have ever done that. I'm like, yeah. I mean, if the engineers back in those days had access to the nice poly caps we had today, they would have used them. So I was like, you know an antique or whatever is an antique but I want it to sound good too so anyway I, I replaced the capacitors and uh, but that's one thing I want to re redo and I also that um, power amplifier that power oscillator I mean that thing I used to use that uh, that was really cool to bring up AC units kind of like a Variac uh, that's a pretty cool unit so I want to uh, get that thing going again too and those isolation transformers will be nice uh, to use on my, maybe my oscilloscope things. I want it nice and quiet. So we'll see. Um, what do you guys think? Uh, that Genrad oscillator, I, I, that's one thing I want to test right away. I want to see how low noise it is. Hopefully it is low noise. And yeah, I'm really kind of excited about that little guy too. Um, but yeah, I might have to make room on my bench, right? Get rid of some of these power supplies. <laughs> anyway, uh, I do have a bench in, in my, uh, storage. It's a small bench, but yeah, anyway, I need to get some more benches, I guess, but, uh, some shelving units, right? So, all right, guys. Hey, hope you liked it. Hope that was kind of fun or interesting. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you think about that MC30 as far as recapping it or, you know, if there's other tubes that I can use or what do you think? Now, I do, in my storage unit, I, I do have a tube checker, one of these uh, kind of professional units. I hope it's still there. Uh, thankfully, they didn't steal my, you know, test gear, even though it's probably worth just as much as audio gear. But anyway, uh, the tube checker I have there's some boxes of tubes in there too so uh, these common tubes I, I probably have those but yeah let me know what you guys think and uh, two thumbs up my patrons appreciate you guys appreciate all you guys watching and uh, really curious what you guys think about this stuff and which ones I should which ones you want to see first so that transistor tester I want to try that out I think that'll be fun but yeah let me know and We'll see you next time.